Hey everyone, it is Chaplain April and um, I had a really horrible week last week so I was not able to get any videos done so I think I'm doing better today. So I guess I'm just going to start with doing one of my um, book haul videos and this is one that I did a few months ago. Um, before I ever did a video on it, I was doing these. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, I posted a picture of this. I looked it up. It was January something. So, um, these are the books that I bought on that day. Let's see if they show up here. So, I'm just going to show these real quick today. Uh, I bought this ESV English Standard Version Bible. Um, and what's funny is I had, I think I had made a mental note to buy an ESV because all I had is ASV. And, um, since I made that mental note, I think I've bought three of these now. So I need to check that off the list and get it out of my head. Cause when I go look at Bibles, I think, oh yeah, I don't have an ESV. I need to buy one. And then I end up, I ended up with a couple of them. So I really didn't need to buy that anyway but now I have it and it's um, dark brown and teal I don't know if this is leather but anyway I, I, I don't really need it but here it is it's not even my favorite version um, I picked up um, Craig Rochelle's The Christian Atheist I think this is one of the first books that he wrote and um, it is true that there's a lot of people that are in church, call themselves Christians, and they don't truly believe. Um, I know that's hard to believe, but it is true. There's people that go to church for lots of different reasons. Some people go to church because they think it's good for business or, you know, it's a social thing or whatever. Not everyone goes to church because they are a true true uh christian or to go or goes for the right reasons some people go to, to to scope out guys or girls or whatever so you know just because someone calls himself a christian doesn't really mean much and it really hurts my heart whenever i hear people say well christians are all um hypocrites and everything and I understand why people think that because they're looking at someone that is doing something wrong and then they're thinking oh all of Christians do that all Christians are like that all Christians are lie, you know lie and are hypocritical and do things that they say they don't well um, my challenge to that is um, that you can't lump all Christians into one one box I mean, uh, to me, you know, I mean, there's lots of different types, but if you want to break it down into two main ones, there are spiritual Christians and carnal Christians. And maybe I can make a video about that someday, but um, a spiritual Christian is going to go to church because they are wanting to worship God and they're wanting to get more of Him. They're wanting to get more of His Word into their soul. So, um... The tag on here is believing in God, but living as if he doesn't exist. And he has become, and this is the pastor of the church that I go to. He has become, you know, New York Times bestselling author. He's written several, several books. One that I was going to mention is um, Soul Detox. That would have gone very well with a um, study that I did on the heart getting purifying your heart and getting things out of your heart that would have been a really good book to go with that um, the next one is Lee Strobel's case for faith um, Lee Strobel was a journalist for I think it was in Chicago yeah he was the editor of the Chicago Tribune he was a spiritual skeptic, an atheist, and he actually went on a his own journey to disprove the Bible and disprove the faith. So his first book is The Case for Christ, and then he wrote The Case for Faith, and now he's written several 
several books and um, they are just awesome because they show how he went from skeptic uh, Christian you know skepticism about Christianity and God all the way to now he is converted to Christianity because he couldn't disprove it he when all of his research actually pointed to it and proved it so that one is going to be really good uh, and then I guess the case for faith uh, investigates the toughest toughest objections to Christianity extraordinary grace uh, and I think I did this I bought these books whenever I was doing the grace study and that's why I have two books on grace um, this is Gary Chapman, which is, um, I thought he was a singer, but I could be wrong about that. Anyway, he, he's, I've heard of him before. So this just talks about the call of grace, applying grace, and being overtaken by grace. If you don't know what that means, go watch my study on grace. <laughs> Because uh, it's not just a word, a cool word. It's uh, in Christianity, grace is something that God bestows upon us as his children. And um, that's why he forgives us and everything because of his grace. So here's another one, The Grace of God um, by Andy Stanley. He is a very well-known pastor, preacher, speaker, author. Uh, so I just kind of wanted to check out what these guys had to say about grace and his I think that there's an intro in here from Beth Moore or something written by Beth Moore who is another popular teacher I actually didn't end up reading these books that's not good but um, but I always use these books for reference and to get different perspectives and different views when I'm going to teach um, a study on on something. Then I got um, a book called The Lost Books of the Bible. So, um, you know, there's a lot of controversy with the Bible itself because, like, if you look at the Catholic Bible, there's a lot of books in there that are not in our Bible um, and so there is um, a lot of controversy surrounding what should have been in the Bible what's not in the Bible what ended up in the Bible why don't we use the Catholic Bible and um, th so these are some of the books that are not in our Bible they did not pass um, canonization um, and then there are just also books that were written by different people so it's good for historical purposes and it's good for laying foundations and seeing what things were going on but we're but they're not considered inspired by God like the canonized books are so um, but it's still good things to know and it, it, it's all about early Christianity and how things came about so I I like to know about things like that. I like to know about the Dead Sea Scrolls. I like to inform myself about all of this because I know I'm going to get asked questions. Um, I don't really do well with being put on the spot because that's when my mind goes blank and I'm like, Ugh, even if I might know the answer, I can't think of it right then. So, but that's just, you know, having um, uh, attention deficit 